Excited that might be that. our matchup of the night as far as the gold medal round goes with Turkey and Georgia. Familiar setting at 125. Last year, Georgia with a silver medalist and a pair of bronze medalists to total up the 105 points. They started this year with eight returning wrestlers off that squad, off that lineup from a year ago. Certainly they thought they had a chance to get top three once again this year, and they are in a position to do just that. 92 kilos, final bronze medal match. Moldova and Russia, Alikan Zabrailov making his way out for the Russian Federation. Russia has already won four gold medals in four weight classes, this being the fifth weight class. So a chance to pick up more hardware with Zabrailov matched up against Georgi Rubayev, who used to wrestle for Russia, the 28-year-old. And Rubayev, up until 2016, was a teammate of, Zab of Zabrailov, and uh, they know each other very well. No senior medals for Rubayev. Matter of fact, Rubayev still trains with the club in Vladikovkaz, Vlad uh, and so again, these these two have a very similar style, different body style, but a very similar that old Russian system. No, good. So again, hand fighting right away. Uh, Zubrailov and Rub just feel a bit. You notice Zubrailov's meeting Rubayev at his hands and now at his elbows, trying to control those ties so that Rubayev doesn't have, uh, have the ability to clear the weapons to get to an attack. Exactly 60 seconds in a whistle. Next time a shot clock will go up. And right on cue off that whistle, there's a low strike. Boy, that was a submarine mat level for two. He was able to beat that. He was already changing levels when the official blew it and uh, get two very quickly. I love that shot. Rail off. Russia strikes right after the official had warned Rubayev. Being a little too quiet offensively, the Russian says thank you very much. 2 nothing Russia. Gold medal match coming up at 92. United States and Iran colliding. And Zubrailov won the Russian nationals. He's of Chechnyan descent uh, from the Chechen Republic, which is right next to Dagestan. If you've ever peruse the internet, the Dagestan and the Chechnyan fighters. These guys uh, are in an area that is pretty volatile, but they love to compete and they love to wrestle. Um, and so Zabrailov is not going to give up anything easy, I'll tell you that. Again. Zabrailov loves to shoot off that whistle. Rubayev up to that trick. He was ready to catch that one. Yeah, fool me once, right? Yeah, not twice. Zabrailov very comfortable in, in an upright position. He, you see a lot of the Russian athletes with their backs very, uh, you know, bent over at the waist, elbows in, hands up. He stands up pretty straight, almost like a Greco wrestler, digging for his underhooks and fighting hands. He meets Rubayev at his hands, but I think once he changes his level, he's fast to the go and comes off those knees quickly. Yeah, we saw that earlier on his takedown, the only takedown in this first period. So Zabrailov of Russia with a 2-0 lead. Into the second period we go. 
нормально, нормально, нормально. I want to remind you, coming up, gold medal match is still tonight. Two weight classes to go. Jaden Cox, the USA, Alreza, Karimi, Iran. That's the battle at 92. And then a familiar duo hookup. A ghoul of Turkey, Gino Petriashvili of Georgia. Petriashvili, the two-time reigning world champion, the great Agul of Turkey, a two-time world champ. He was an Olympic gold medal winner. A colossal match at 125. And in fact, we were laughing last night on the broadcast. You have to go back to 2013 to find the last 125 kilo world champ not named Petriashvili or Agul. Right, and they both are amazing wrestlers i like to say it's not your father's heavyweight these guys are fast or slick they wrestle like little guys and they're absolutely powerful they have a completely different look when they come out here agul is going to walk out chested thick petrishvili a little taller longer but man they are fast to the get up tape issue on the right hand of Zabrelov. They gave him a little bit of time to try to fix it. He could not, so the referee said, let's wrestle. Zabrelov with a 2-0 lead. Rubayev looking for his first senior medal, trying to get something started for Moldova. Again, Zabrelov able to get that inside control, now pulling on the head of Rubayev. And then they meet in that bridge position where they're both interlocking fingers and the official gives them the finger wag and says, fingers, no, no, fingers, cannot grab fingers. Yeah, next time that's going to be a caution and one for both wrestlers. A shot, a low shot by Zabrailov. And out of bounds they go. And it will be a step out if it's confirmed, which I think it should be, and it is. So Zabrailov with a 3 nothing lead. Again, it's right after that whistle. He comes in. And that's twice he's been able to catch Rubayev. I think the Matt chairman is bringing him in, our official from the United States saying, did he go straight out of bounds? It probably will be a caution in one is what I'm saying. Right on cue, so that is it as well. He started in the middle of the mat, under attack. He bailed all the way out of bounds. That 99% of the time is going to be a caution against the wrestler who flees the mat. Those cautions can be killers if it comes down to a criteria tiebreaker. Zabrailov in again deep, fought off successfully by Rubayev. Rubayev with that yellow square up by his name. That's one caution. Three cautions, you're DQ'd. We've only seen a couple of those this week. And an Iranian get DQ'd. I believe it was in the Greco Roman division earlier in the week. Very rare. Zabrailov with a 3 nothing advantage halfway through this final period. Right, and he does such a great job of controlling hands and controlling position. Zabrailov you know, doing enough to win this match and also controlling Rubayev's hands. But Rubayev goes a beautiful duck under. And he's going to look to go high gut wrench right now. He's going to drive Zabrailov forward. And now he's going to twist the chest. But he said, I don't have enough time. I got a minute six left to get a takedown here. Down three to two. Rebayev's right back in this. Again, going to that bridge position. Their fingers almost like we're going in little kids soccer. Where we're letting those kids go in between us, right? Hey. But they're just going to see if they can uh, get to an attack. Zabrailov, straight shot. Low attack by Zabrailov. That's where he's had success. He's caught by Rubayev. Trying to put that pressure on the back of the neck of the Russian Zabrailov and get the whistle, and he does. Came crushing down with his chest onto the back of the assailant that time, Zabrailov. Both going to that finger lock again. They both need to be careful. They've already been warned not to go finger locks. Next time, they'll go caution in one. Rubayev scored when he changed his level to that outside step in the duck under where he swung to the outside. He needs to create an angle on Zabrailov if he wants to take him down. And he needs to create it right now. Running out of time. Tried to do that same one that he got two with. Zabrailov, a lot of hand fighting, hand defense. There's a trip opportunity, and it's caught by the Russian. 
He was ready for it. And Russia has the bronze medal. Not a bad idea by Rubayev. He knew it was now or never. He had to take a gamble with that trip opportunity. And Zabrailov, you can bet, was waiting. Right, and you know, losing three to two or losing eight to two, you got to go for it at the end of the match. I think he waited a little too long. But Zabrailov was excellent defense and had just enough to score to win three to two.